Hi, this is Justine, my wife. <laughs> this is Robinson, my husband. We have not been sailing on our boat recently, as anybody who watches this yeah. channel knows, because this boat is a construction zone. Oh, and also, we have been self-isolating because, of course, of the, the virus situation. And so, therefore, uh, we're watching a lot of movies. We yeah. thought it would be a good idea to maybe review some movies that are loosely related to the subject of... Sailing and the sea. From the perspective of sailors and people who live on the sea. And f on the subject of uh, reviewing films about water, ocean, sailing, we're also completely drenched as we do these reviews. Captain Ron, may I have the camera please? Legendary movie. The legendary movie Captain Ron, or Captain Ron, directed by Tom Eberhardt. Eberhardt. Eberhardt or Eberhardt? Eberhardt, yeah. It's a 1992 film. It's a comedy film, but more specifically and more rare, it's a nautical comedy film. Yeah, early 90s, Home Alone type humor. It's it, it is it was meant to be a Disney movie. I think so. You know, it's, it was paid by Disney or. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a Disney's the parent company. Yeah, and Disney has like a sub company called Touchstone, and usually back then at least I yeah. don't know about now. Touchstone is is usually the the sub company that releases films that are a little more spicy. Yeah, there's a little bit of sexual suggestion, starring Kurt Russell and Martin Short. Martin Short plays Martin. Kurt Russell doesn't pay, play Kurt Russell though. Are you the captain? Yeah, Ron Rico. Ron Rico. Ron, Ron Rico, yeah. Which, which is, in Spanish is yeah, tasty rum. rum. Rich rum or tasty can be muy rico. It can be very tasty, very... Okay. Very a little rich. bit of a Spanish lesson. As sailors, as travelers, the first question that comes to mind with these sailing themed movies is, is the goddamn ocean portrayed realistically in this movie or not? <coughs> Absolutely not. Sailing lessons continue about as well as can be expected under Captain Moron's direction. I don't think there are two scenes in the movie, literally, where the conditions are the same. They filmed the movie to all different sections and then they spliced different movie. They, they had one day of helicopter shots and all the shots from the... Yeah, all the helicopter the, shots, all the setting shots, overhead shots, they're all... A certain weather. The sailboat is being chased by pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, pirates. Which well, will be one of our movies we're going to review. Yes, we're it, still discussing whether it's nautical. I, I say there's not enough sailing or even ocean in the movie of Pirate of the Caribbean is so Pirate much... Pirate of the Caribbean okay, is, Pirate, really, is it, not Pirates, a sailing movie. Pirates is literally about a captain, boats, sailing boats specifically, tall a uh, tall ship boat. No? How does this not count as, as a... I mean they're all very long movies and how much of it on the movies is actually dedicated to a boat, you see a scene sailing it's or... It's a lifestyle. It's There's not a lifestyle. single, beside the usual jargon they like to use, you know, like the, the lingo of all tiny ships. There is no, you almost never see a maneuver, you never see a sail change, you never, like you can literally see the exhaust of the engine half the Speaking time. Speaking of Pirates of the Cari yeah. Caribbean, uh, we're reviewing <laughs> Captain Ron. I, I think Captain Ron inspired Jack Sparrow, definitely. Thinking about the the demeanor you got this the alcoholism kind of like, and yeah the alcoholism the the kind of loose speaking of pirates of the Caribbean we are reviewing right. way, Captain we, we, way of tax straight away I guess I should do like a synopsis of the film so yeah. a, a, a short description of the film would be a normal suburban family in Chicago the father Martin works downtown in the office building and the wife is at home working on architectural plans or interior design of some sort and they've got two kids they inherit the sailboat it's in a fictional it's on a fictional island called saint pomme de terre which i think is supposed to be saint martin it's supposed to be the french Car the french caribbean and then they make their way to the 
the, the Latino crib and then the, that, that's the whole point and then they get to Cuba and then they get to, yeah so they're, they're making that semi semi fictional semi real because then yes they they end up going to Puerto Rico the film was actually uh, shot, shot entirely in Puerto Rico and then they uh, are making their way up to Miami and we who knows in the no I you're right I think they filmed it entirely in Puerto Rico it's probably not filmed at all in, in Florida no, I Even think no. It is Miami. That scene when they come in, in the end, it's Miami. You think that's really Miami? Yeah, that's definitely Miami. You're not gonna get def definitive answers here. Uh, just a disclaimer. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is completely conjecture. We don't know the. That, whole, that, mar that marina, that style of people, well, that that road, the uh, the the ship coming in towards the end, as is that's my that's very Miami. It could have very well been Puerto Rico. I mean. We'd have to call up makers of the film and talk to them, essentially, if we want to get these kind of answers, because it's not, it's not out there. It's not something that's Googleable. It's not something that I found on Google. Do you look on IMDb? There's everything about Google. Yeah, on IMDb you have the same couple of little trivia things. Basically, the film was definitely shot in Puerto Rico, which was a highlight of the directors to be filming in Puerto Rico. As you uh, read on IMDb, it yeah. was it was said that John Carpenter yeah. wanted to film, who who often films with uh, Kurt Russell, was considered for directing the film because he wanted to film in Puerto Rico. He wanted to film in the Caribbean. Yeah, he liked the idea of having six months paid vacation as a yeah. film. I didn't finish the synopsis of the movie. Sorry. The synopsis is the family upon inheriting the boat. Uh, they're trying to get it from Saint Pomme de Terre to Miami and of course they don't have any experience with the boat they have to get somebody to help them sail it there the brokerage that they're trying to bring the boat to to get it sold hires them or gives them Captain Ron to be the person yeah because he finds out that the boat is no he's not gonna earn anything from from selling it as a broker yes so he send them some local captain is sending them some professional and all sorts of hijinks ensue because Captain Ron is is a character and I always I've been wondering with this movie is Captain Ron the main character or is Martin Harvey the main character who are you supposed to be more identifying with I think Martin I think I think it's before him Martin it's actually Martin Robbie says that he identifies more with the character of Martin Hart. No, I feel that was the point of the director. That's what the director. I, I'm totally like for <laughs> Captain Ron. I, I, I don't You're know. for Captain Ron or you are Captain Ron? I feel oh. I feel like I'm Captain Ron. Except I don't drink, so. Dog will break. Dog will break. Choco, don't bark. Mm? No barking. So Martin is your typical, uh, your how you say, protagonist of your typical 90s Hollywood. You know, he's the when I mean normal, super square. square dad that has never had an adventure in his life. And but he wants to have the adventure. At yes, first. he he's there. He wants to have the adventure, but he has his. He wants to have his very controlled square adventure. He wants to have an adventure, but in his rules, which is a lot of what people think when they go sailing it's like you know they say like I'm leaving and I have this budget and I'm gonna spend this much money and I'm gonna go this and this places and this and, this. and then like I want to do this in four years and most people end up doing it in ten the most realistic aspect of this film I think is this idea that Martin Harvey the dad uh, starts out and and is really gung-ho about this adventure and he's like oh come on family let's go let's go on this adventure and he has everything planned out in his mind of exact and even you see him pointing out on the map you know I'm gonna go here we're gonna go here we're gonna have an adventure in this location and in the end he's the one who is suffering the most anxiety and he, he can't deal with any unknowns he can't deal with any um, setbacks he has the nervous breakdown first in, in the fact that he's unable to control any anything he's eating my brain he's the last one to learn to go with the wind and the current and go with the flow. To me, well, the drop of land on his face, so I, I definitely I feel sorry. For yeah, him. <laughs> you, you gotta feel sorry for him too. Yeah, you gotta feel sorry for the character because 
if somebody was trying to steal your wife immediately yeah, or like going hitting, handsy on your wife yes yeah, so or hitting on your daughter immediately and giving alcohol consistently to your what is it 10 or 11 year old kid again touchstone movie yeah. not a disney movie for these reasons it bombed at the box office it wasn't it wasn't critically acclaimed when it came out originally in 1992 and then it became a cult movie i think do we consider it a cult classic? Definitely, yeah. It's a cult classic among, among sailors. sailors yes. Oh, what's the name of the the restaurant that they go to there? I think it's called Ted's. No, yeah. Ted's is no. They were supposed to go to Ted's and they got the island wrong and then. Oh uh, uh, yeah, okay. It's some Chinese. It's a Chinese uh, lady. A Chinese restaurant built in a plane on the beach. Yeah. It is a very. It's it's the coolest location. Of course, the daughter. And, and the family's kind of complaining when they, they roll up. As they roll up, they anchor. They don't deploy the dinghy for some reason, <laughs> which you can see clearly is on the deck. And yeah, they, they have the dinghy throughout the movie, and they never deploy a dinghy. They, they wade in the water to shore for some reason. The boat that they used to shoot was a Formosa 51. It was three Formosa 51, apparently. A couple of, several Formosa 51s they use for different shots in the movie. And I looked up on sailboat data and a Formosa 51 is a long keel, but it's still at least like six feet of draft. So how many anchorages are like that in the Caribbean? That you pull up at a beach at the little... Okay, how many anchorages are still allowed to be done in the Caribbean? Because I think back then... If you had a catamaran or any boat, you could literally reach it anywhere and no one would say anything. Nowadays, ooh, the only boat I think I have ever seen that looked better than the photographs in real life that I have gone to and said, hmm, this was the one that they didn't sell to us in the end. In yeah, Canada. the first boat that we tried to... The first boat that we tried to buy in Canada. Like the pictures were pretty bad and we walked in the boat and the boat was immaculate. Like, I've never seen some, such a turnkey of any boat. There's the old saying that the best day ever for a boat owner is the day you get the boat and also the day that you sell the boat. Well, he's happy with his boat in the end, but... I really like the idea that the boat is worth, what, like more than $200,000? Yeah, this is... You got the photograph of the boat and then the real boat in front of them. We audibly laughed in yeah. the scene where they're all excited to go pick up their multi hundred thousand dollar boat <laughs> and it definitely most definitely is not worth that how much you think it's worth less than perfect <laughs> plus the perfect condition yeah which is every every boat the movie starts really upbeat and everything is normal family uh comedy type style our character martin is going to work he's entering his building and the glass is shattered yeah. on the ground in front of the building and i for some reason, I have a memory of the first time watching this movie that it was somebody who jumped out a window and that's why it was smashed on the street. But upon viewing it again, I realized that no, it was just a window that fell out by accident and they're discussing in the elevator packed, crammed with cold, you know, people going to work and s sneezing. The, the guy next to our main character is saying, uh, I mean, we all have things we want to do in this life. Before we get a chance to do them, some window falls on us. One moment, you're just minding your own business, you've got plans for the future, and then next moment, slam, you're grinded by glass on the street. You're like shredded meat. <laughs> you're shredded meat by glass on the street, so... Or you, or you get a disease and die, and lady goes, that's true, and you goes, ah! Ah! Oh! I always thought that this movie was a very accurate portrayal of the sorts of things that gets people inspired to go cruising. It starts out very realistically of like, this is how you're inspired to go cruising. We don't know anything about sailing. And even the excuse in the end, you know, oh family, let's go cruising. And the wife's like, no, we got too many responsibilities. We can't leave our life here. And the, the realisticness of saying, Oh, but my daughter's got a scummy boyfriend who wants to marry her here. Okay, let's. Okay, time for a vacation. We're bringing the kids. Here we go. So the boyfriend's scummy. <laughs> why why is he scummy? He's like, he's like hey, let's scummy. Uh, uh, hey, dad. Hey, mom. I, like, I think he says, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, mom. M mom and dad. Yo. <laughs> mom. Dad. The motivations of our characters are very realistic, I, yeah. I found. Which shots 
are shot in the boat and which ones are shot on a set. Oh, that's interesting. I think I think they had a set of the entire boat and the interior and they decided like I have a feeling the engine room to me was way too small to get a crew in the at those in those times. I don't think there's an engine room on the Formo Formosa 51. Maybe if you're watching this, if you have yeah. a Formosa 51, you can you can Let put some links to a photograph of I could not find an interior shot of what the engine room like, looks like on a Formosa 51. The only boat thing is the, the, the cabin looks similar to the actual Formosa. See when the daughter's doing something in, in the cabin, that's kind of, that's one bit to be forward, like when she's cleaning herself like from the engine. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's somewhere. It, does. it could be the interior. I don't think it is. I think that you're right. I think that they made an entire set, you know, forward, the center of the boat and then the cabin and the back cabin I think that they made those all sets and the engine room they made it all they made them all sets but the for some reason the back cabin and the shower they took from reality of of the layout of the boat the layout of most Formosas doesn't seem to be the layout that is portrayed in the movie at all except for the back cabin no there, there is some scenes the scenes when they come in and out like the saloon looks very much like the, 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 the actual boat, like the scene where they, they are scenes spliced here and there where they're like, oh, that's the actual boat. But then there are scenes like, especially there's a lot of them, like even the back cabin, like in one scene when she's cleaning it, it looks like the boat cabin, but then when Captain Ron comes in and they're making love in the shower, that looks like a set, like yeah. it depends on which angle. If anybody's cabin. standing up straight and, and you can see more than the top of their head, you, they probably shot that in a set because you, you stand in a boat and when I film you in the boat and we have a pretty tall boat, in a lot of cases, I mean even here in, in our saloon or salon area, you can, if, if you're standing in this huge pilot house, you can see the top of the boat in most camera shots of my camera, even though I mean I have a certain kind of lens, but um, for the sake of filmmaking, I, I think that the, the headroom is too small. I think that they don't like the look of claustrophobia for a full-length feature film. Because that's the other thing, too. I was trying to figure out, like, why not film in the boat? Yeah. Uh, you have a set. You can move the set around. I mean, for shots of the interior of the boat, yeah. they, I noticed they had to make the set move. Actually, they moved the camera and it had stuff being pulled with wires, I think that's how they, they... But that's so complicated, just... I mean, here we are, we film on our boat all the time, there's nothing wrong with it, it's a little bit claustrophobic, it could be difficult for, I guess, older camera equipment to move that all off and on a boat. There must be some practical reasons like that, why they don't film on a boat, but in the end, all I can think is, there's a scene near the end where Captain Ron is discussing with Martin, you know, like, good job, you know, you finally did things right, you're you're finally getting a hold of this seamanship thing and it was decided for me when I was watching that scene that it's a set but then they had to move stuff around, they had to move the set around, they had to make it seem like the boat was under sail and that's more complicated to me to get a room or a recording studio somewhere where you have yeah. to like move stuff and move the camera or and, and have people and even this this idea of making it seem yeah, like whoa yeah. we're on we're healing that could all just be made very easy by having the boat at a dock you have some people on the side of the boat it tips the boat a little bit you move the boat around i, I don't know yeah I, I don't know these things about you know feature length filmmaking two people purposely rocking a sailboat can like really get it rolling it's incredible how yeah, little yeah, weight yeah. you need to move from one side or the other in 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 the, mo in the right movement. So uh, again, if you're trying to film a movie and get the feel of of a oh we're at sea or we're sailing the boat or things are rocking around or you know they have the scene where there's a big storm and everybody's panicking, yeah. would it not be easier to feel what the characters are feeling by actually having them on a real boat? Wait, what is that? I, I, I wonder that actually, because that's an outdoor scene. So I wonder how. I wonder if they built the set. No, that was a set. They, uh, the the storm. They use a model, and then they have like a model with superimposed images of water and 
I mean, I, that's that's real 90s specials effect, special effects, low budget special effects in that scene. But then they're all on the deck and they're steering the boat and the compass goes flying. Even though that looks pretty wet and hard to film, I mean, that makes sense that it's a set. It's hard to control the weather. But in the interior shots of them when there's a storm, I'm like, why don't they film that inside a boat? Would it not give you the feeling of panic and fear to be in a claustrophobic place with, I don't know, there's 10 of them or there's 10 or 15 of them and they're all shoved down there and you could have the camera down there and everybody's wet and shivering and and, and claustrophobic and Captain Ron comes down and he says something like, you, you, know, don't, want you don't want to be down here when it breaks up. <laughs> <laughs> you folks don't want to be down here if she starts to break up. I read some reviews of this film when it came out, like 1992, you know, the Los Angeles Times or whatever, writing about this film. And everybody, even at the time, was complaining that the sets looked chintzy and the film looked cheap and everything looked flimsy and... I, I mean, I think that's what drives me nuts about the realism of the sailing in this movie is... Fine, you, you know, different shots of the boat sailing on different tacks that when they didn't even turn the helm, that's all one thing, but like, you have interior shots of the boat, I get the engine room. You can't cram three people into an yeah, engine. Room and make a full-on scene or Yeah, set. I get that, but like, for everything else. There wasn't really anything else that I think that they couldn't have filmed in a real boat. But I mean, we're in the age of small camera, digital... We're in the digital revolution where camera equipment is easy to fit wherever you want it, and that's probably part of the explanation. You said to me while we were watching the movie, every captain says that the reason why he... <laughs> Choco! Choco! You said to me while watching the movie that most captains will say, you know, I lost my eye to a shark attack, I lost my leg to a shark attack, I got this injury to a shark attack, I got yeah. that injury. <laughs> shark attack. You know, you see, and you see a saying it's got a scar, and you ask, hey, why didn't you get that? It, it's, it's become, at least me as a kid growing up, I remember every time I did see a scar on a saying and I asked what it's about, you know how kids are, you know, they were like, hey, what's, how do you get that? Most sailors would go, they would look at you, you and be like, shock tag. They were probably just referencing this movie. I wonder, I would. <laughs> the nonchalant, uh, swashbuckling, like, pirate-like, but good-hearted, but will steal things or ruin your, your items and, and your equipment uh, in a heartbeat, will let your anchor go overboard without a second... Look, I, I don't know. We we know people like that. We know we all know our our versions of that, and and I think he just got the, the character was done well. The character was the film. Literally, the the film was named after the character. The originally the film had working titles. I think such as uh, the name of the boat, the wanderer. Um, oh, what's his name? Goes on on a cruise. Martin Harvey goes uh, on a cruise. Yeah. Something like that. And uh, I saw the other title was something like uh, All Aboard or some stereotypical nautical And they went jargon. with the most charismatic character in the movie in the end. Yeah, and in the end they named the movie after what the movie is. The movie is all about Captain Ron, although, like I asked you before, who's the main character? Is yeah. it Martin Short or is it Martin Harvey or is it uh, Captain Ron? He's not the villain, he's not the anti-villain, he's not the, the hero. Well, he kind of comes to their rescue in the end, but how does he get to Cuba? So the family is left adrift after the, the pirates they, attack. They leave him in Puerto Rico, wherever they're supposed to be. And then, and then he yeah. shows up in Cuba as they drift up onto the shores of Cuba in the lifecraft. Yeah. The last you see of Captain Ron is him standing there with the so-called pirate people who, who commandeer the vessel. He's standing there in front of them, kind of going, uh-oh. I, I was thinking that maybe what he did was he kind of either stowed away on board the boat before um, the pirates come in and, and get them, or he is with with the pirates. He's with the people that he double-crossed, and that's why he gets to Cuba. No, either I think way, he follows them. But how does he follow them? I don't know. He's cut them wrong. That's mysterious. Either he went and got a vessel and you don't know which vessel he took to that island and it would be a pretty big deal for him to just steal a vessel i mean he's used to stealing cars you stole this car it's another thing for him to steal a vessel 
leave Puerto Rico and get into Cuba. Maybe but do the ferry. Because I don't know much about Kurt Russell. I was wondering, does he actually have a fake eye? Yeah. Because he appears in all as the character Snake Spliskin. Snake Spliskin. Snake Spliskin. Spliskin. Snake Spliskin. Is that how you pronounce it? Okay, he appears in the Escape from New York and Escape from Los Angeles movies. He appears with an eye patch, the same eye patch. And for a while, I was pretty sure that he actually had a fake eye or something wrong with yeah. his eye. And then it kind of went and I looked it up and it ends up, well, there's no conclusion here. There's no report that Kurt Russell actually has a fake eye or something. He just happened, it's just chance that he keeps on appearing as a character with an eye patch. Does he appear with an eye patch in the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie? No. Okay. And and I and I wonder if the eye patch is always on the same side in all three movies where he plays with an eye patch. I think he has the eye patch on the same side all the time. He always has it on the left side. He always has his right eye open. And the weird thing is is that the eye the fake eye is like a good fake eye in the movie. Like at some point he, he you know, I no, think it's when he, he gets up. He looks all weird, he's like, looking like... He does a good job, like, that's f***ing great acting right there. I don't like to draw attention to myself, so lose it. Another aspect that's really realistic to you in the movie is you said the flare. Martin Harvey hates Catamaran, he gets so upset. It's, it's when the woman in the water really sets him off. He goes and he gets the flare, and he's, and he's standing there, he's ready to shoot Captain Ron in the He's ready to murder somebody. He's ready to murder. That is pretty quickly. I mean, he goes from being a little bit annoyed to getting ready to shoot the guy, but he accidentally shoots the, the deck. To the dry rot. It goes through the dry rot, into the, into the boat. Well, it's not dry when it gets wet. Uh, good question. Does dry rot remain <laughs> dry? <laughs> Does it count when it's wet? Do you guys think that the show where he shoots the flare in the boat, did they actually shot a flare in the boat? I think that was a studio. Well, a flare, that's what I, I guess I was asking you because I've never shot off a flare that actually worked. I always shoot off old flares that aren't working anymore. You can basically buy those like birthday party sparklers that it's, just make lights. It's a way stronger than a birthday sparkler. So what? what does a flare usually do? Does it burn through a deck or does it usually... Yes, it's one of these reactions, a very hot, yeah. a very bright light. It's a super exothermic reaction, super... It will... I think a flare will actually melt... It will not melt to a steel deck, but a flare that lands on an aluminum deck will go through it. Yeah. I think so a flare is hot enough to make a hole through an aluminum deck. Like it, it, it pretty much sets wood that it's in contact with in fire. fire. Can he grab the flare that's gone off with a with a, a scissor? I don't know what he grabs it with. He, like a pair of like, tongs or something. He grabs it with a pair of tongs and he tries to get it out of the boat. Possibly, maybe with a pair of like big leather gloves. I, I think being that close, I think it's too hot to be that close. They're on the life raft and they wash up in Cuba, and I always wondered what is the big deal. The family says, what's the big deal? We're on dry land. Yeah. And Martin Short is freaking out. He's like, we're in Cuba. Everybody back in the life raft. We're like, in a communist country. <laughs> what happens at the time of filming, at that period of time in history, what happens to Americans if they land in Cuba like that? They probably get arrested and torn in the cell and yeah. Is it really worse than being out on a life raft at sea without water? Uh, he, seems to think, water? he seems to think so. <laughs> That, that's the thing which I, I thought most about watching the movie is like how does the place actually looks like right now I think one a lot of spaces where the movie was shot is probably, are probably full of boats right now it's the most of the docks they go are really shitty like wavy uh, like it's really weird it's always yeah. waving the, the, the boats are always like moving at the <laughs> dock like crazy like what, what kind of docks did they choose like yeah I, I think things have obviously changed we'll yeah. see when we get there yeah. When we hopefully we get are there. just there. Yeah, we're 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 quite close. We're just a couple of hundred nautical miles, miles away. away yeah. Do you feel like you're really in the cruising life at sea when watching this movie? Would you say this is a good? This gives you a good idea of the cruising life. This movie. I would say no, uh, no. I would say this would represent a family renting a boat for a ten day, like a Croatia <laughs> dream yacht charter. Red running, blue standing, standing. 
You got it! <laughs> Even though this movie is supposed to be the story of a family which comes together in a time of hardship, yeah. unexpected adventures, um, they even turn their boat away in the end from the dock and say, no, we're going to continue sailing out to sea. It's supposed to be like the yeah. characters uh, grow and become more seaworthy. Yeah, they're cleaning and repairing the boat throughout the movie. Oh, and that's a big problem. I mean, that's the most unrealistic thing in the movie, of course, is the idea that they scrub the deck a couple That they varnish and sand during the trip. They, they scrub and varnish for a couple of hours, and the boat goes from looking like dilapidated dry rot to now the boat might be worth $200,000 if yeah if they get it from point A to point B. I think they probably looked for three boats. They had one that really looked dilapidated and said, perfect, don't touch it. Yes, and of uh, course they, they filmed this movie with several different formosas. Yeah. And one of them is spotless. And it almost doesn't look like a formosa actually. It looks like it, it's got, it seems like a more thick, it seems to be longer and a more thick deck. Well, the different formosas have different layouts and, and builds. They used the more dilapidated one for the first scenes of when the boat's supposed to look dilapidated. And they, even when it looks dilapidated, if you look carefully, it's not. They took yeah, great, they just put some shit on the they deck. Put a lot of they tied some pound fronds on it. I read that they uh, used another version of the boat for when they're shooting up the boat, when they're when the pirates are shooting at the boat, and then of course they have another version of the boat that they use um, when they're sailing around. There's a version of the boat that sails well. There's a ver version of the boat that looks shitty. Yeah. There's a version of the boat that was sacrificial. That I guess that they could blow things up. Why do you think this movie is important to the sailing community? Well, for one, it's the first of its kind. And secondly, it's, it's the last of its kind. And it's the last of its kind, <laughs> exactly. It's the first and last. Or of its is kind. it? I hate everything about you, you stupid ugly. Million dollar budgets making several million dollars at the box office. Will this happen again? Really? Will there be another sailing nautical comedy?